Hello, and welcome to Here's the Thing with Robbie and Jose, where we explore relationships through a male and female perspective. With me, as always, is the lovely Robbie. Hello, Jose. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm well. Yeah. I heard a little gurgle at the beginning. Was that your throat? That was me, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I don't know what it is about me. I, I don't know if everybody else does this, but... You can always hear me like digesting food and uh-huh. gurgling and stuff like that. People hear it. It's loud. Well, it's weird too on the pod because it do, feels do, like... Does that happen to you though? Can you hear yourself whenever uh, sometimes. you're... Sometimes. Okay. Maybe it's... Okay. So it's not just me. But it's amplified on a podcast. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So there's a lot going on with me. <laughs> you know, it was funny, this is off topic, but the other day I was leaving work and where I work at is very... Uh, it's a, a bougie area of Plano mm. and there was this woman that was crossing one of the streets and she was very cute, like thin, like really nice figure. I like and she where was, the story's going so far. <laughs> this, is, this is a good setup. I'm, I'm, I'm liking it, but yes, please continue. It's just for you. Yeah. Um, but she had a baby stroller in front of her and I was sitting at the red line. She was passing by and I, I know this is going to sound terrible, but I was like, there's no way that that woman just had a baby. And like two seconds after I said that, a Yorkie dog's head mm. popped out of the baby the carriage. Baby, and I was yeah. like, okay, that makes <laughs> sense. Because <laughs> she looked too, I mean, like she was beautiful, but she was too, I was like, uh, yeah, I don't Yeah, well, it was one, one of the ones that like, the, um, like where infants go, right? Not the... Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looked like a rosemary baby kind of like black... Thing. Yeah. And I was like, mm, I don't know. And then this little Yorkie's head popped out. I and I was I've, like, I've seen, I've seen some women that, um, you know, they, they've stayed in shape. Like, yeah. and even after they had their kid, like really quick, they bounce back. But you also have to have really but big it, it genes. Happened, yes, yes. Don't get me wrong. It's few and far between for <laughs> you sure. You can't just be right? like really big your whole life. And then, I mean, well, I guess you could, it'd be a lot of work. But yeah, yeah tough, if you yeah. have the, if you were blessed enough to have a naturally thin body. Well, you know, it, it, it takes work too, right? But if they have like, that's their, um, you know, that's just their lifestyle. They yeah. stay fit. And then when they get pregnant, it usually doesn't change much because yeah, they try if, to stay with the If routine. fitness is important to you, you're going to continue that even during the pregnancy. You, piece, you see pregnant women exercise and stuff. It's like, okay, they were probably already into fitness yeah, before. Yeah. And, that's why they got pregnant. <laughs> but I also heard that it helps with the pregnancy. I mean, the delivery. Yeah, if you work out, you keep in shape, keeps your heart strong, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And then we get into the whole, you know, should you have a natural or should you have C-section? Because there's a... There's a different schools of thought when it comes to that. I feel like at this stage in my life, I'd want a C-section. Yeah. (laughs) Is that the only reason because of the stage in your life? (laughs) Well, I've never really thought that before. And when I was young and naive, I guess I was always like, oh yeah, just have babies, you know. The regular way. Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, it's... it's, uh, There's pros and cons to both. Sure. But I feel like there's more cons... With a bigger con with having it naturally. Yeah, actually, I don't think it is, but I get it. I get it because there's the recovery time. Um, I think when you have a C-section is much longer because mm. they're ripping all your muscles. To, yeah. to, to, to like, can you put out. a six pack in there while you're got it open? Yeah, just exactly, slide it. Exactly. So and then they're scarring. But, you know, you know, I, I'm sure it's there's benefits. I don't know. But uh, yeah, but you just have that like little scar underneath. You wouldn't see it anyway. It's yeah, not like across your face. Sure. sure. <laughs> what happened to you? Uh, yeah. I had a C-section. <laughs> they cut my face open for some reason. Yeah. And then I've 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 went out with women before, but they've had both, and it's like okay. <laughs> so so I don't know which one was better. I guess we could ask them which one they prefer. Yeah, I would be point. curious to know if for the listeners out there, if you've had both, write in, let us know <laughs> which one's worse. Yeah, I mean, like, out of all the topics, that's the one you should guys Well, I'm, I'm actually interested because I don't know if I ever do get pregnant. Maybe my thoughts will change on it. I don't know. Yeah, Emails, maybe, let us know. Maybe. Um, so today, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to be talking about... Um, I kind of put the title out of the, the topic. It's called, should we take it to the next level? You mean level two? Yeah, level two. Well, just the next level, whatever whatever that level is, right? So so what prompted me for that, right, was I was watching, and I didn't watch the entire episode, but I started watching a Netflix um, show called uh, Jewish Matchmakers. And anyways, in there, she had, uh, she had said a term and she said, um, when in doubt, go out and date him till you hate him, is what she said. Okay. Right? Which is weird, right? And it took a minute. I was like, what do you mean, you know, when in doubt, go out and date him till you hate him? And what that, 
what that means is if you're on the fence with somebody and you don't know, right, there's no deal breakers exactly, but at the same time, you're kind of like, mm, I don't know, maybe, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Let's say they're kind of your type, but not really, but then, you know what I mean? Like they've said some good things like what you need to do is you need to try it out, right? So when in doubt, go out because that's really how you're going to find out whether or not. You mean see what your other options are out there? No, what I'm saying is like, okay, let's say you're on a dating profile, right? Uh-huh. And you see a girl and let's say you swipe right, um, but it's not something that you usually do. Okay. And then she hits you back up and then you're like, yeah, oh, I mean, you know what I mean? Like I, I barely like swipe right. It. Yeah. And maybe it's your finger the- was all slow <laughs> on the <laughs> swipe. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you kind of went halfway. So it went halfway and then and you popped it pop back. back. Yeah. Like, Should I go left? Because <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. I'm sure it probably happens more for women than it does for men. Oh. But it does happen. Contrary to popular belief. Although there are some people that just go right and then they figure it out afterwards. But the, 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 those of us who take time and read and kind of go through it is, I've done that before. And then like even uh, one of the dating apps, it lets you go back. Mm. So it'll say, do you want to look at all the ones that you've swiped left on? And oh, see okay. If you so wanna... it's like putting them all on your shopping cart and then you yeah, can go back and look. it's like a look. second chance. Yeah. Like, do you, are you sure you didn't like them, right? Because maybe you need to have a few drinks and then... <laughs> But, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but but no, that happens. And they'll never know, obviously, right? Yeah. Because they don't they don't tell you how many swipe lefts you get. Like that that would be too cruel. Uh, I could only imagine how many left swipes. Like, obviously, four thousand nine hundred eighty-eight. Right? Because but here's the thing: I go right so often, and yeah. I only get a few replies back. So if I do the math, it's oh, it's not good. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But um, so that's why guys swipe on everything because well, they figure a lot of it times, out later. Well. Th- in general, I will say this, and and I've always found this interesting to me, is that you'll see, um, I look at a woman's profile, and she'll be in a very, you know, sexy dress. Let's call it right. It's a mini skirt and no straps, whatever. It's, it's, she looks fantastic. Uh-huh. Then you'll see another one where <laughs> she's in a bikini out in the pool, and then you'll see another one uh, where she's out in an event, wears some Daisy Dukes and. And then all their, on their thing, it's like, I'm looking for somebody serious. If you're looking for a hookup, that's not for me, you know, and don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not shaming them for anything, but there's a, there's a contrast between what you're, what I'm seeing right. and what you're saying to me. Like you're, you're, for me, it's like the sex is oozing out and, and that's what I'm getting out of it. I know I'm not the only one, but then in your profile, you're saying, if that's a hookup and that's all you want, that's not me. And you know, like, yeah, because like, why else would you have like your profile picture is a shirt with the slit all the way down to your navel where your chest right, is out? It's like, right. well, you don't want to be sexualized, right? That's what I'm saying. It's like, uh, why do you think I'm swiping? Because <laughs> I'm do you think it's because they're just trying to, to get that initial attention from the guy of like, okay, I'm cute, I got a nice body, so I'll reel you in with that, but I don't want to do a one night stand thing. It could be that, but mm-hmm. I would say that I am more. I guess I'm more, I like it when they don't over-sexually sexualize themselves. Yeah. Right? Same reason why girls don't like guys that like the gym pics and stuff is because it's like, you're doing this just so I can visualize what you look like naked, which doesn't tell me anything about you as a person. Right. And you can convey that in a much different way. You don't have to, like if you're, if, <laughs> if the shirt is a little more form fitting uh-huh. and appropriate in my, <laughs> and we can tell you're fit yes, underneath. Yes. Cause now you, that's a complete package. I would imagine for a woman, you're looking at this dude and it's like, okay, that shirt fits him really well. The pants are looking pretty, you know, like everything's They're right. They're all filled out. Yeah. <laughs> and of course you can see some definition on the arm. Let's yeah. say it's a short button up or whatever. Like you can convey that without taking your shirt off. Right. With just a belt buckle, you know, <laughs> and jeans, you know, yeah. like, okay, I get it. I get it. So my point being is a presentation. Yeah. And so there's, whenever I see a profile and I see, you know, a woman that doesn't overly do it, like let's say she might have a dress and it's a summer dress. I'm like, oh, that's really, really cute. It's yeah. not overly whatever. It's just appropriate, you know, for I can see her, you know, going out to the Arboretum or something for yeah. whatever, right? Um, so you can still convey, because we know that you have something going on there, right? But when you put all of that and then you at the same breath say, don't, if all you're looking for is a hookup or friends with benefits, I don't do this, I don't do that. It's like, okay, I get it. But you do understand that what you're presenting. Again, if I go into a law office and all the let's say my attorney and all the female attorneys are just showing a lot of cleavage and short mini skirts everywhere. You're like, you're hired. Well, yeah, maybe, <laughs> but it's just like, if we're trying to exude 
uh, professionalism, that's not the way you would go. This right? is what I think certain things that- it is for those women. And I'm not saying a hundred percent of the time, but it feels like when we, I'm speaking for women, when we're young in our minds, we think the less clothes we have on, the more sexy we look. That's what we think. Sure. When you start to mature as a woman, you realize, oh no, it's not that. It doesn't matter what skin is showing, actually less can be more attractive, but I have to figure out how to uh, put things that look good on my body and et cetera. Just to your point of the guy with the fitted shirt, whatever. Those women, I think it never really clicked for them because they're still doing that same thing of the only way I'm going to look attractive is if I'm showing more skin. Yeah. I just think it hasn't clicked for them. Yeah. And it hasn't clicked for the dudes either because- if I can just bring a different aspect to it, right? It's almost like there is no exclusivity, right? So if I'm looking everybody at a gets woman, to see it. yeah, you, you, you're showing everybody. This is uh, this is not unique to me. I would imagine that if I was to date a woman, and I'm not saying that she has to be dressed from head to toe, right? But let's say you know it was it was nice, right? It revealed a little bit, but not too much. Mm-hmm. It keeps me more interested. Right. Whereas if you're showing everything from the get go, and again, I'm not judging. But it's like, okay, I'm seeing it, but so are all the other dudes in this restaurant or bar or wherever we're at. So this is not just for me. I mean, there's a little bit more that you can show me, but... It takes the mystery out too. Isn't that yeah. part of the fun of like maybe your yeah. first time with that person? Yeah, exactly. So you you remove all of that. Yeah. And again, even on dating profiles, uh, and again, I'm not judging them, but it's like most women tell me guys don't even read the profiles. Because that's the other thing I see all the time. Nobody reads this or read this first. And it's like, okay... If you know that they're not reading, then they're just judging you based on your pictures. So again, if it's if it's a lot of revealing photos, yeah, that's all I'm looking and at. And ladies, you don't want that guy anyway. The guy that's only swiping on girls that are barely wearing anything. It's like, yeah. you don't want to date that guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and for the dude, again, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you want to date, if you're a nice girl girl, you're going to want to date some guy that if your profile picture is you in like your work suit or whatever, and he like swipes on you, he likes you and he tries to hit you up. I'm not saying he's not thinking about sex. I'm just saying it's more like, Hey, I really like this girl. She looked beautiful on her photo. Like I want to talk to her rather than you wearing something that showing everything. Yeah. That type of guy that swipes. Well, because on. the the thing about when you show everything, right? And this is not even that due to the topic. I know this is like a we'll whole into, different episode. <laughs> this is a whole different episode for sure. But just if I could just stay on this for, for just a second, right? So if I'm a guy and I see this, right? Um, and I see a bunch of photos where it's a revealing whatever, I have to think to myself, these are all the photos that she's probably had on all her social media. Mm. So is she going to be showing all this too once we're together? You know what I mean? Which I will parlay this into the episode, right? Okay. So let's just <laughs> a say. A connection. Yeah. Well, let's just say. Wait, so so that was it. Like when in doubt, go out. Mm. And that had that's where it stemmed from. It's like you're not sure. So let's find out. Let's go out, right? Again, you normally wouldn't swipe on them or whatever. Mm. And now you did. So now you have to go out. And then date them till you hate them means. Because I've had this too, where you go on first dates and some of them are amazing. Yeah. You make a true connection almost immediately. It just feels so magical. It feels awesome. Like everything is just clicking, right? You you get one another. You're like, you're green on everything. You can see it really fast. And then other times it's not necessarily that, mm-hmm. but it's not bad either. Yeah. You build on a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's for lack of a better word, vanilla, if you will, but yeah. it's not good and it's not bad either. Yeah. It's just like, okay, it's good you had company. a decent night. Yes. It's like, oh. And so that's where the date to you hate him goes. Okay. Because what happens is it's like, yeah, there wasn't this big passionate thing that happened, but it's, but it's, yeah, it felt nice. It felt okay. I don't like, they don't repulse me or anything. You know, <laughs> let's yeah. start with that. Right. Uh-huh. And so what you do is you can build on that. But so you have to keep on going out with them because other traits will reveal themselves. So like if you go out with them, you might find that you do have more things in common. Or maybe she cracks a joke and it hits you really hard and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you had that in you. And is this more of this to come? Like, okay, now I found out more about you that I like that I didn't get on the first one. It can go the other way too, where they say something silly or something that you don't agree with and it hits hits hard. You know what I mean? Let's say you have... um a big difference in politics and you, that's that's something that's very important to you, that might deter you and be like, okay, well, I thought you were okay, but now I know for sure I'm just not. That's where you hate them. Yeah. Or they continue doing things like they burp in public all the time or they chew with their mouth open. And it's like, okay, now 
I can't take this anymore. Yeah. I think you should give everybody a chance though, because you're right. Cause when you're newly dating around, you're probably dating a few people. So it's, there's nothing wrong with it. If you go on a date with someone and you're, you know, kind of casually dating, but like, if you don't really give them that chance, how are you going to know? Like you can't right. have every first date is going to be like fireworks. Yeah. Like sometimes you just have a pleasant evening yeah. and you may be dating a couple other people, but you're like, you know what? I like Sarah. Like I had a good time, yeah. but let me see if there's anything like really there. Yeah. But the, I, a lot of people give do give up. Yeah, yeah. But if I just think that people that give up immediately because it's not exactly everything what they're looking for, you're short selling yourself. Well, again, I think, you know, I think the people have been lied to, to a certain degree and, you know, and and I guess they never really defined it, right? But if what you're looking for is sparks and passion and all that and you'll settle for nothing less, then yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Because again, they could be having a bad night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's too much pressure if you're saying, okay, I didn't feel anything the first night. It's like, okay, great. But maybe he or she had a bad day. Mm -hmm. Maybe a relative was getting on to them. Maybe they owe money. Maybe they're, you know, struggling at work or, you know, they're planning on downside. You just don't know. And so you only get one chance to make a first impression, fair enough. But based on that one date, if you're going to totally discard them, I just hope that it's appropriate, right? Yeah. <laughs> Again, if they did so many things that were just deal breakers from the get-go, sure, you know, So same on. thing with like a, like a job interview, you know what I mean? Like if their credentials are excellent and you generally liked them, you know, yeah. but let's just say it was just not a great interview. Yeah. If you look at that and really evaluate like, yeah, maybe they just are not good really speaking to yeah, people, yeah. but this job, you don't have to do that. And let me right. look at all the other things I did like. So yeah. typically that's why they usually have multiples. Yeah. And they bring other people like, into I don't know it. about you. Let me bring you back. Let yeah. Me that's, that's the problem. It's they, they, based on the first one because there's only, and it's very akin to that. There's only so much that you can do, right? Like there's only one position and you might have 10 candidates and it's like, we only have one position. So you yeah. can't bring them all back. So you do have to say, okay, this one's going to So what back. you're saying is we have to wear a low cut shirt to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> That'll definitely get you back. But, uh, but no, so, so I mean, I get that point that you have to date them, right? So let's say that you do start dating, right? And let's say you're dating somebody and may, maybe it was passionate, but now it's died off a little bit. Whatever the case may be. Then most guys don't think about this, but they would be, it would behoove them to think about it. Mm. What's the next level, mm -hmm. right? Or should we go to the next level? And I know for guys, we have a tendency of like, it's going good if it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Just let it be. So, but I know in most cases, for whatever reason, they want a relationship to evolve. It's not enough. It's always got to be moving forward. I don't mm -hmm. know why that is. I don't know if in friendship we do that. I know that we move forward together, but it's different. You know what I mean? But in a relationship, you have to move forward together, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like there needs to be another level. There's no level for friendship, right? It's like that's your that's your uh -huh, friend. Best friends. <laughs> there is and a best, best, friend. best 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 friends. <laughs> <laughs> B -b -b -b. And then the best is best is best is best. <laughs> the best is and the rest is. And then your day one and all that. So, but you know what I mean? Like in general, uh, it, there's maybe one or two levels, if yeah. that. But in a relationship, there's so, it continues to go. Like if you, if let's say you were married young, you could say, well, we were married young and then we were in our 20s. It was a different heart. And, and, and in our 30s, we went through a bunch of different challenges. Now we're in our 40s. Now we're hanging out more. And, you know, again, it's it's a journey, if you will, right? And so you have to start, start thinking about it. What's the next level? Mm -hmm. Now, I know I've had this before, so I, I'm guilty of this. You start thinking, do I really want to go to the next level with this? Because what if I'm missing out on a great opportunity with someone else? <laughs> well, it goes both ways, right? So to be fair, I could think to myself, this could be it. You know, this could be the person that I could eventually be with for the rest of my life and maybe I can see myself getting old with them, right? Mm. And I'm assuming women have this thought too. And then on the other hand, I'm thinking, oh, is this the woman that I want to be with for the rest? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, what does it, that mean exactly? It's do like, you feel like that? You're talking about when you're a boyfriend, girlfriend? Yes. So, okay. Well, let's, let's even start 
before that. Well, so, that's what we were talking about. Well, we're about. talking first dating, right? So right, we're right. dating. We haven't had that conversation where we're mutually exclusive. So now. you're having as the guy in this scenario, you're saying that things are going good because you're going out on dates, you're being yes. intimate, you talk right. on the phone, but you haven't asked her to be your girlfriend. Right, right. So you're like, why would I change it? Everything's so great. Right, right. Because we haven't had that conversation, okay. right? And there's nothing changed really much about... Now, there, sometimes it just naturally... Now you're just dating, like your boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. But there's times when you're dating... And then let's say they start leaving toothbrushes or stuff like what usually will jar that conversation mm, and be mm-hmm. like, oh, you're leaving your stuff over. And if you don't say anything, then it's kind of implied we're both okay. <laughs> yeah. If you say something and you might, you'd be like, you know, you go talk to your boys like, man, I don't know what to do, man. Like she left her, she left some overnight stuff at my house, right? And I didn't ask her to. Mm. Or that could be what begins a conversation. It's like you've been dating, she comes over and then she leaves every night. And then one night you're like, I really don't want her to go. So that's when you say, hey, you know, or let's say you have plans to come over. It's like, why don't you bring an overnight back tonight? Right. That's, that's, that might jar the conversation like, oh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't mm-hmm. thinking about that because I've always just picked up my stuff and left. Yeah. So, but there's other times when like, let's say they do bring an overnight bag and you didn't ask them. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think the person who lives there should be the one to initiate anything being left at their home or a drawer cleaned out or anything. Don't show up with your suitcase, people. I'm just saying it happens. It's happened to me quite a few times where I didn't ask them to, but they brought their overnight back. And then there's times when I've asked them to bring like... If you want, you you add, it's totally fine. but But there's been times when they just bring it over and I'm like, oh... Okay, I did, we didn't have that conversation, but okay, I guess you're staying the night. Because the, the, the invitation... <laughs> I just, that face, I wish I could have recorded that face. It's terrible. <laughs> Why is that terrible? Because I, would, terrible? I can't imagine just like showing up with things and just like, or leaving things. Well, again, it, 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 the, there was a comfort level. There was no discussion, right? Mm-hmm. But again, let's say... This has been going on, and I don't know what your, you know, let's say once you got to that part where you are intimate, right? Is it once you get to that, does it already assumed, okay, we're together? Because sometimes that happens. But I'm just saying, does it have to be said? Some people it just naturally happens. And I think with the people that just came with their bags, they felt like, okay, if he's asking me to come over, he should be okay with me staying the night. I mean, we've been you know, been intimate well, for the last two or three months. Exactly. You can't assume the way you think about everything is the way they think about exactly, it. So exactly. just because he says like, hey, come over, let's watch a movie. He right. didn't say bring your bags. I, I agree. <laughs> but it'd be, you'd be surprised that sometimes they do. And I'm just like. That's so awkward. I'm just imagining if a guy did that to me, me having to tell him like, you know, you're going home, right? Like, yeah, well, I don't see, know why. <laughs> See, okay, that's a key difference between men and women because you can get away with that. And he might feel a certain kind of way, but that doesn't mean he's not going to stay and watch TV with you <laughs> and hoping that it's going to get intimate, but that's fine. He'll leave. But I can't do that to him. If I were to say that to a woman, it's like, why did you bring an overnight bag? Were you planning on staying over? Uh-huh. That kills the mood. I'm done. <laughs> why don't you say it after you? <laughs> Be like laying there. Oh, by the way, bad advice here. By the way, I saw your bags by the door. Was that what's in there? Does that mean? I mean, it's smart. I mean, I swear you're a dude. No, I'm not uh, condoning this behavior. Yes, you are. You just said, and Robbie said that Mm. it's okay to have that conversation (laughs) after. That's a post intimacy conversation. Okay, great. I see. I was doing it wrong. I was trying to have this conversation before, which is not a good idea. But I just think for whoever it is that's bringing their bags, assuming things, you should be invited point blank. I want you to spend the night tonight. You should maybe bring an overnight bag. I mean, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I think it should be, right? I think that men should be able to say it. Why Why is it that you can't say that? And like I said, not saying it in a mean way, but just like... Well, I'm not ready for that. My men can't say it to a woman. That's what I'm saying. Because that's that that all of a sudden it changes everything. It, it changes everything because it's almost I don't know. But you should it be should should be shame on the woman for thinking that that just because you invited over to watch a movie means that she's spending the night. I think that that's rude, and you should be called out on that by you saying, like I said, not in a jerky way, but just say like. 
hey, I saw you brought your bags. Yeah, that would kill the mood. I get what you're saying. It's completely logical, and I agree with everything. But I think you're if saying, a woman, if it's like new, right now. if it's newer in the relationship, <laughs> I don't think it would be that hurtful. I'm not saying if you guys have been dating for a long time, but if it's brand new, and you maybe messed up and you assumed. And he said, oh, well, like, I have to get up really early tomorrow. I, I wasn't expecting you to stay the night or something. I think I'd be like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I kind of feel like this is sometimes, not all the time, at least in my experience, that it's implied that once you start having sex, uh -huh. you guys are together. And it feels like, I don't know if it's a Southern thing perhaps, mm. but that's what I get. That the moment that we start having sex, all of a sudden we're together, right? And everything that it implies, like we're moving forward with this. So the act of having sex means that you're already in the next level. So if it happens early on, it's almost like you've advanced it, which is weird, right? Because let's say you've been dating for a month and then you have sex. And these days it happens a lot quicker than that. But let's just say a month. Now it's like, okay, now we're having sex. So now we're together together. Mm -hmm. And in the next month, that's when she'll bring her stuff over. Sometimes it happens a lot quicker than that. So let's just say after two weeks, you, you, you started being intimate like on the third week, she's bringing her stuff over because it's like, okay, we're together now. And that's what ends up happening. Yeah, but even if you were together, doesn't mean you just automatically get to spend the night just because you felt like it. See, I, I know I, that women... I feel, like they, <laughs> I feel like they feel entitled at that point because that's crazy. I've, I've given you my body. So now you're going to get everything. That's how... If And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's the that's the vibe that I've gotten. Because again... They would only do that, to your point, if they felt like we're in the next level. If they felt like we don't need to have a conversation, the fact that we had sex entitles me to sleep over now, that's how they feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it, so that's what I'm saying. So the moment that you say, hey, you can't sleep over, they're going to say, oh, really? Okay. They might stay, depending on, they might say, well, okay, fine, you're right. Maybe you didn't. But I would imagine that someone would be like, okay, great. Well, then we're not going to sleep together anymore. I get Take it. that. And, and then they leave. And then you're like, well, I still want to hang out with you. Yeah. <laughs> I just wasn't, I wasn't sure that, you know, I, I technically did not ask you to stay over. But you see how difficult it is? It's yeah, difficult. Yeah, I understand that they could take it that way. But I think that we as the woman or the other person need to be a little bit more rational when it comes to the relationship is new there, you can't just assume that there's no boundaries with anything without a discussion about it. So let's not assume. And you, if you really want to stay the night, you can ask. Just yeah. say like, hey, I was thinking about bringing my overnight bag. Is that okay with you or whatever, if you want to be right. forward? But yeah, just assuming and showing up with your bags. No, I don't think that's well, appropriate I mean, at all. And I think you should tell that person. Well, that's what I'm saying. It gets tough, right? Because, and I've had this happen to me before too, right? Again, it, we never really had a conversation, right? We we end up having sex, right? And so, again, you can do that without being passionately in love with somebody, right? It just happens because, you know, you're not, you're attracted to one another. Right. Maybe it's one of those things where you were on the fence, but at the same, you know, you found them somewhat attractive, right? Yeah. Then you, you end up having sex and this, that, and the other. But then because you're still dating, you're really not feeling much of it, right? And so let's just say that you at that point, really don't want to pursue the relationship anymore. You don't want to go to the next level. Okay. So then you break up and the first thing that will come out, it's like, oh, you used me for sex. That's all you wanted. And it's like, no, I really genuinely was trying to give it a shot. And then, you know, we did have sex and maybe that, maybe that was a deciding factor, but it wasn't that only. But they feel like it. That's the problem is the timing couldn't be worse. <laughs> Because think about it, if you're on the fence and then you do get there, right? And let's say you do, you know, let's say you're attracted to another, one another, but the personality isn't quite what you like. You know what I mean? Like they're pretty mm -hmm. and he's handsome, but their personality isn't jiving with yours. So you have sex thinking maybe that'll, you know, I'm thinking from a woman's perspective, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a shot and we have sex because he's not horrible. He's an attractive man. And then, you know, let's say you're still not feeling because you can have those same feelings now. I don't know what it's like for men and women. It might be different in the sense that maybe you women bond more whenever you have sex. That could be a thing. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. But I know the men, typically it'll be the tipping point. At that point, they'll either like, yeah, this is the one. Like, I want to be with her. Or it could be like, nope, nope. You know what I mean? Like, she was okay. And then after that experience, mm, 
Nope. And it partly could be because after the sex, there is the pillow talk. Mm. And sometimes the pillow talk, believe it or not, can be better than the sex. And if it's not, like if, and this is for a man and woman, right? Because we both know that there's times when I'm sure a woman, you know, has sex with somebody with a dude and it's like, I want him to leave. I don't want him to stay. Yeah. Like, you, you're, we're done. Happens on the guy too. But that's what I'm saying. But then the implication is, oh, well, you just wanted sex. That's all you were using Yeah, I, I'm going to say something that's going to make me very unpopular. <laughs> with who? Men or women? <laughs> uh, with women. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't understand why women say that because you wanted sex too. And no one was forcing you. You chose to have sex with this man and then it doesn't work out. And then you're going to sit there and tell him that you just used me for sex. Well, you're a big girl. You consented to it. Yeah. And you wanted to have sex too. So why is it that that's a go-to for women? I don't know. I think... Because if it, that was it, you guys used each other. You know no, what I no, mean? No, no, no. Yeah, I get it. I think it. what ends up happening is it's a, it's a sense of rejection. And they're upset, right? So I think that's the easiest thing to explain it away because the alternative is you just didn't like me. I mean, And who wants to admit that? Look, I'm not (laughs) saying that that doesn't hurt. And you can be upset and you can feel anything you want. But to say to that guy, you only used me for sex, I don't think that's right. If you want to be the rejection, you know, things like that has happened to me. I've been rejected too. It hurts, but I'm not going to blame you. Yeah. Because I had sex with you too, meaning I wanted to. Right, so right. I got something out of it as well. There's these there's these social agreements sometimes that are not spoken and, and not everybody abides by them. But I'll give you an example for the guy side, right? And this is where where we get in trouble. So if a guy pays for the dinner, we go out to, you know, a really expensive restaurant and the bill comes back and it's like five hundred bucks or whatever and you pay for it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the night goes well and then you just hug and then that's it, right? So some guys feel like, well, I should be entitled to a little, a little smooch or something. You know what I mean? Like I just, but it doesn't, it doesn't entitle you to anything. Like you said, you're a big boy. You brought out your credit card. There was nothing in the clause. That said, yeah. Cause that sounds like he wants a, a sex worker. Exactly, if that's what it is, exactly, you're just exchanging exactly, money for sex, then ex- do that. Exactly. And so that's, that's the equivalent, right? So the equivalent of that for a guy is, is, again, if he pays for a nice meal and he feels like he's entitled, no, I'm sorry, you're not. Right. But it's the other way around, too, for a guy. If he loses interest after they've had sex, to your point, you all were both in it. Yeah. Maybe it was his intention to get that and then get out, but most guys don't do that. Yeah. M- most. I would say the really good looking dudes, the ones that, you know, for lack of a better word, like to put up numbers, mm-hmm. right? This is guy. These are really handsome guys, tall, attractive Yes, they want to get as many conquests as possible. And I'm, if you're a good looking dude, like, no, not me. Okay, fine. Not you, <laughs> but everybody else, everybody else, right? But then if it's just an average Joe that, that, you know, it's not like he's a player or whatever. He's just little average Joe. And then chances are he's not smashing left and right. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not just trying to go around trying to get conquest. It's just something happened. It didn't, like, he didn't feel anything. And he was just like, no, I, I don't want to pursue this anymore. Well, a lot of the times too, the guy will pick the restaurant. So like if I was going on a first date with someone, I may just start with drinks or something. I don't know if I would do dinner, but still I wouldn't choose, if it were up to me, I wouldn't choose a super fancy restaurant yeah. because of me personally, it just, I feel guilty. It's like, you don't really know me, whatever. But let's say that he says like, oh, we're going to go to some steakhouse. He chooses it. Yeah. You're spending that $500, again, all your idea, and then you're mad at me for not going home mm-hmm. with you. You're right. It's the same thing, but it's like yeah. you're doing all of this. I didn't ask, exactly. let's go over here, and I'm going to get the lobster, and I'm going to get the steak, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because then the guy would be like, oh, you're just using me for my money, which, again, is you know, nonsense. You're just hungry. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. But, you know, it's weird, so I'll go on a different topic here because that's the other hard part about restaurants. So when I take a woman out, I try to find a happy balance depending on what kind of woman she is, right? And what I mean by that is like if she's blue collared or if she's a little more professional, you try to find the sweet spot. Yeah, you don't want to take her a place where she's going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, because if she's more blue collared and whatever, and and if you take her to an ultra fancy restaurant, I'm not saying she won't like it, Mm -hmm. but it might might be too much or she might feel like this is... I don't know if he's trying to impress me, but he's over the top. Like it can come off really, really bad. Whereas if there's a woman that's used to that, 
it yeah. wouldn't phase her a bit. It's like, no, this is my comfort zone. I, I live in luxury. So like, you yeah. know, I can pay for these restaurants. I'm okay. So you kind of almost, you don't want to insult them. And at the same time, you don't want to go too over the top. So you always have to find that nice. And mm-hmm. you don't want to take a professional to like a, a like a Chili's or anything like that. So I thought you loved Chili's. I love Chili's, right? <laughs> but I'm talking about like, if she's like a, well, I don't know, doctor, she might be like, no, that's going to kill you. But you know what I mean? Like a, yeah. a CEO, CFO, like an MD, somebody, somebody higher I just higher feel up. bad when guys spend too much money on me and like those types of things, especially when you're newly dating. So like, I wouldn't pick, I know there's women out there that do that. I get yeah. it, but I wouldn't pick places like that. Like yeah. I would just feel bad. But yeah, yeah, I think it's messed up for the guy to think that you spend this money. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing too, men. Men, I mean, until anything changes, you have to have some money to date. You can't, I mean, you could try to date if you didn't have any money, but it's very difficult. I've dated on a budget. And I got you pretty good You can do it on a budget, yeah. but I'm saying if you don't have any money, like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you just can't, like even going to like the movies is too much, you know? It's tough and I don't recommend movies as a date anyway. Well, I'm just yeah. saying like, don't expect that you're going to get something yeah, I would say that you have to get your stuff somewhat together. You yeah. know, I, I don't think, and again, this is a, out of my realm, but I would just, I would recommend for any man that you need to have your stuff together. Now, there are going to be women that are going to be looking for guys that are more on the ball, if you will. And then there's going to be women that it doesn't really, as long as you have semi together, yeah. you don't have to be a CEO of Fortune 500, but you know. You but even if you are blue collar, even those places, you start going out to Chili's even, let's say, and then, so you're going on a few dates a week and let's say that they're all kind of that caliber. Maybe you have a couple of drinks, you go pick yeah. her up, you buy her some flowers. Even if you're doing it on a budget, it still can be a lot of money. So for oh, the yeah. guys who want to complain about like, well, I paid, you know, $80 for this dinner. It's like, well... Isn't that kind of implied if you ask me out on a yeah. date? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have it to spend, you don't need to go out there. But um, so let's say you made it to the next level. Okay. <laughs> she brought her stuff over. You didn't tell her anything. So now she's staying a night and then before long she's staying the weekend. And so maybe you had the conversation, maybe you don't. But let's in this scenario. It's like she leaves her stuff. She just never leaves. <laughs> right, she's like squatting. <laughs> but let's just say in this scenario, I asked her, hey, do you want to bring an overnight bag? And then eventually turned into you want to stay the whole weekend. Why don't I just clear out this drawer, blah, 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 blah. And so we start progressing into that. Okay. But we haven't moved in together. Okay. Right? So are you boyfriend and girlfriend at this point? Or yeah, just... at this point now we're boyfriend okay. and girlfriend. So now we're boyfriend and girlfriend, right? So okay. we're, 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 we're doing that. And then, of course, so we let's say we've been dating a year. Now then the question becomes, okay, do we take it to the next level, which in this day and age is mostly, or do you want to live together? Right. So then you have to start thinking about that. And here's where it gets a little more complicated, depending on where you are in your relationship at that time, maybe it's not a good time to ask that question. Right? Well, I was going to think a lot of the time when people do ask to move in, it's because you want to see them more than you already do. So right. it's like, how can I see you as much as possible? <laughs> We know how you feel about it. <laughs> Why do you want to see me so much? No, <laughs> no. But it is, it is, it is a, it's something to consider because now you're going to have somebody living with you. Yeah. And it's not like, again, when you're dating and let's say she stays for a weekend, doesn't, and maybe she stays every weekend, there might be a weekend where she's not. Right. Or she can't or whatever the case may be. Or even that during the week you're by yourself. Yeah. So you kind of get used to like, okay, I can do whatever I want to. If I want to eat Cheetos in the living room, nobody's going to give me crap about it. If I want to throw my laundry around, I got time till the weekend to clean it up before she gets here. But during the week, I'd just be as messy and just Sounds be like an dude. awesome relationship. I'm telling you, it's a great <laughs> relationship. But then let's say you sense that she wants a little bit more and she she's like, hey, what's, what's you know, like, are we, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Like, this is great. Yeah. But like you said, maybe genuinely she wants to see you more or... Whatever, whatever the case may be. But let's say you sense that she wants to go to the next level. Mm. And it, I'll give you both scenarios because then there's the other one where you sense that she's not. If anything, she might be pulling away. Mm. So sometimes you try to lock it down for that reason too. It's like, oh, I feel like she's a little more distant for some reason. Maybe I should ask her to move in. And trap then, her. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> before she starts getting ideas and yeah. realizes that I'm not the best thing for her. <laughs> You lucked out and you're like, you don't want her to realize yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So let me see if I can lock this down. But it's something to think about. And and you need to have that conversation too. And I think sometimes it's been a while since I've had that conversation, mind mm. you. 
I mean, it's been years since I've had that conversation. But sometimes it's dropped subtly by women. Mm. Women have a good, nice, subtle way. Of, start buying decor for your home. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if we get a home, I want it to be this. Like, we, we, we get a, where did that come from? <laughs> I'm here watching The Simpsons. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> where did that come from? But it'll come out of the blue anywhere. Or if, if I... God forbid you start looking at Zillow and it's like, oh, I'm looking at this house. Oh, I think we do great in that. Oh, mm. man. You know what I mean? Like, or, you know, those, they'll, they'll drop little hints here I'm and glad there. I'm a woman. When we, when we have these conversations, I just feel so bad for you guys. Like in that scenario of like her <laughs> dropping these hints and you don't want to move in and just the anxiety <laughs> of being a man has got to be really hard. It's tough because <laughs> I know that they want to, right? It sometimes they'll write out, sit down and ask you like, okay, what is this going? Like, <laughs> do you think we're going to move in eventually? Blah, blah, blah. And mm. it's just like, ah, oh. and it's hard because you're really, it's, it's hard because you're trying to live in the moment and it's, you're having a good time. I get that you want to think about the future, but maybe you haven't thought about it too much. You know what I mean? And there, there's, there might be some freedoms that you have, nothing against her, but there might be some freedoms that you have that you might not want to yeah. give up just yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not bad ones, just being able to do stuff. Now, again, if they're, I think whenever she starts coming in, you'll you'll kind of get that. Because once you move in, it's a different ballgame, right? So if she comes over every weekend and she's always complaining about me leaving stuff out, I can clean it up. But let's say I don't and she just keeps on... She's like, hey, I don't like going over to your place. You want to come over to mine or whatever the case may be. Mm. I have to rethink that a little bit because it's like, okay, now I'm going to be with this person forever and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to clean up. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad the thing. The main reason why men don't want to move forward. Yeah. I have to clean now. Yeah, I, I get to shower up. every right. day. Exactly. And maybe the way you cook or the way you, <laughs> you, you do stuff, right? And depending on if it becomes too critical, you might not want to do that. Again, you still love her. Like yeah. she's fantastic. She's a wonderful person. But I know she's sometimes a little critical and sometimes it can be cute, right? Other times, not so much. And so, because I did have one girlfriend and she was really sweet where she would like cleaning up. Mm -hmm. She never nagged me about it. She never said, hey, do she this. She just wanted to do, do it for you. Yeah, she would just do it. And it. And uh, I'm not saying that she derived pleasure, but I think there was something to that that... You know what I mean? That's a scenario that would never happen for a woman. I've never met a man. I've never been with anyone that like, cleaned my house or oh. did anything. Oh, yeah. Well, they're supposed to do that. You never had a dude like see like let's say your cabinet's all wonky. He doesn't go in there and fix it for you. That's the that's the male version of that. I guess if I begged for it, maybe. Oh, my gosh. No. So for me, let's say I was dating somebody serious and I saw something like that. Let's say her, her car or something. Let's say I thought that her oil was low or something. I might take it to the shop for her. If I can do a repair, like let's say I noticed that I was in her car one time, she was driving and the windshield wipers, uh -huh. you know, had that little, where there's gaps and stuff, you yeah. know, how horrible it is. And I thought to myself, oh, she needs new windshield wipers. So I might ask her, what year is the car? Mm -hmm. And she's like, why? Well, let me, let me, I'll order them or if you want to order them for your car, I'll put them on for you. That way when they come in, you do. Yeah. I mean, because those are easy to do, you know, but little things like that is how we would, or if we come home and you see that she's. And it could be you just need to buy her something different. Let's say if she has an appliance and it's old and it's real loud, like a dishwasher or something. If you got it like that, you might be like, hey, I'd like to buy a new dishwasher if you want it. Oh, be nice. Because you know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. That's the that's the male version of that. Yeah. Whereas a female version, it's nice because in those scenarios they're built that way. So the guy you don't have to really ask him, he's gonna offer. And for the for the for the woman, she just does it because she just cares for you. And maybe she and I'm not saying, you know, whatever, but let's say I work a lot and work 10, 12 hours and I don't have time to clean up. And then on the weekend I see her, she might be more understanding, be like, hey, I get it. Let me help you out a little bit. I'm not saying she doesn't have her own yeah. job, but I'm just saying that's just how they I was just laughing action. thinking about if you were the one that had a wonky cabinet and then she fixed it. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> Boy. She's I like, would, let me get my tool I belt. Would feel, I would feel a certain kind of way about that, to be honest <laughs> with you. Oh, I would have to go clean her house after that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go do her dishes after that. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, again, those are acts of service for sure. And I think some people are built that way. But um, but yeah, as men, if we really truly are in our nature where we like to fix things, then that comes natural for us. Yeah. And for women that like to, where it just comes easy to nurture. Now, again, and I will say this because I've told my kids this, 
be careful because people will take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those guys that like to fix things or, or let's say, you know, help buy things because you have money, you have to be careful that it doesn't become like, okay, now I need this luxury bag and now I need this and now I need that. It's like, okay, Mm -hmm. hold on. You know what I mean? Like, and same thing for the, the lady, right? Let's say she comes over and cleans up and then he just purposely now just throws stuff on the floor. It's like, baby, we clean up the house for me while I go take a shower. Like, all oh, right, come on, dude. You know what I mean? Like, like if she's doing it, she's offering it's one thing. It's another thing to take advantage of. And, and, th- and that happens. But but if you're doing that out of, you know, love and, and, and devotion and because that's what you like doing, then by all means do it. It's, just but, been, it's been so many years since a guy is like, without any asking, just done something stop, like that for me. So I don't even remember stop, what that was like. Stop, stop it. I wish. Stop I mean, that's... It. that's for a woman, we want to be taken care of. And that's one of the things that you guys can provide that make us feel taken care of. Yeah. Of but a lot of guys don't think like that. Well, Too I can't selfish. speak for all of them, but there's some of them out there. But um, but then, so so then you like have to have that conversation. Mm. And that's another awkward because it comes from both sides, right? A male and a woman or a woman and a, and a guy. And you don't know how they feel about it. Again, maybe they're right on on par with you, right? They're, they're on the same mindset and they're like, yeah, let's do it or whatever. Because you might say like, hey, you know, you spend enough time over here. There's really no point in you having your, at least that'll start up the conversation. Because mm. she might be like, you know, I get it, but I kind of like having my own place. It's like, all right. A guy might be okay with that. It'd be like, all right, cool. I, I get a, it. But a guy can't say that to a woman. Like, uh, nah, he, I like having my he, own place. He can, but... She might take it worse. Isn't that the same scenario of her bringing her bag over? You said that like you can't tell a woman like, I don't want you to spend the night basically. But it's the same thing. If the woman's like, oh, you know, my apartment lease is coming up. What should I do or whatever? And you flat out say like, look, I really care about you, but I like living alone and squash it right there. Yeah. Then what? (laughs) It's tough. It's tough because I can already, she's going to feel a certain kind of way about that. She really is. I can understand. And then if, she's, if she goes talk to her female friends, forget it. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to get like, that breakup because, text. Because, because what ends up happening is, and I don't know why, uh, women sometimes, not always, but they have a tendency of taking that as an all or nothing yeah. kind of proposition. And it, it's not what we're saying. Right? You're not we're taking not, it off the table. Well, what I mean by all or nothing, it's like, oh, so you want to end the relationship. Right. They, that's kind of how they're taken. It's like, no, 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 no. That's that's not what I'm saying, right? But then it's a double-edged sword because then there's like, oh, well, you just want it like this. So you just want me for on the weekends, but you don't want me during the... It's like, no. Nope, and then you got to play I'm the factor saying. into time because some people think that like if you're dating for six months, you should be ready to move in. Some people is like, no, it takes like two years. Like right. your your concept of time together, if that's different, if she wants to move in after six months and you think that's insane, you're like, no way, that's... Yeah. We've only been, you know, together six months. Yes. She may be like, well... For her, it's a really long time. Yeah. And she might be like, I'm out then. Yeah. And, and you can't they, commit to me after six months. Yeah. And that's how they they take it. And that's that's the hard part. So yeah. from a dude, again, going to the next level, it's tough. It's something that we don't really like to talk about or think about, but it happens. It creeps up on us every single time. Mm. And so let's move on. Let's say you are now living together. Okay. <laughs> you passed that hurdle now. Okay. And so now you've been living together, you know, you've been dating two years, you've been living together for a year. Okay. So now you already know because you start seeing the bride magazines <laughs> and you start telling me about Jenny from work and Jenny's getting married and she's been with them for a Look year. Yeah. And they've known each other for a year. We've, we've been together longer than Jenny and. Oh, it's terrible. And Dylan over there. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think uh, we introduced them to one another. <laughs> That's below the belt. That's too much. <laughs> and I'm like, well, good for Dylan and Jenny. Like, good for them. We did good. High five, baby. <laughs> And she's like, no, no, I don't think you quite understand. (laughs) How is it that Dylan and Jenny can get engaged before we can? And we were dating before they've been. So that conversation Mm. starts up. But that's one scenario, right? But let's say it's a different scenario. Let's say you are living. And I guess if you've gone that far and you can tell me, 
but I guess there could be a situation where the guy wants to get married and she doesn't. Um, I don't know if that happens a lot, right? Because they're living together. So I don't know if in that situation you ask or you propose. Because let's say you skip the living together. Mm -hmm. That's another, let's say you bypass the, the living together and you're dating. And you haven't moved in together, but you still want to get married to them. So that's another big step because you're not, you're not trying out the living together to see if it works out or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing to live together first. I guess that's, that's one of the questions that I have. I, I think you're right. I think things have changed. We're not, we don't do the getting married first now in this day and age. I think most people will move in together I mm, be careful there, <laughs> pilgrim. Be careful. I feel like I would probably want to live with them first. Mm. Tread, but tread lightly. Yeah, tread lightly. But I can understand that because all the girls out there are saying, "Shut up, Ronnie. <laughs> get that ring." There is, then after there is that. a fear, right? You move in. Why buy the cow? You get the milk for free. There is that, right? <laughs> but. What about, okay, what about this? What about if you don't move in until you are engaged and you have a ring <laughs> and then you try it out and then if it's terrible, you can just end the engagement? Yeah, I guess you could do that, but I, I don't know if that's going to work either. It just depends on what you want. Like if you guys are close enough and you have this conversation like, look, we both don't want to get married right now, but mm -hmm. I do want to marry you in the future, but I want to live with you. If you guys are both on board, I think it's fine until yeah. one person, usually the woman changes her mind later on. She's like, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. I want yeah. to get married. And he's like, what do you mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because you can, let's, it could backfire. You could live with one another. And then come to find out that we don't do very well together. That's what now, I'm saying. Well, if you what, were married first, then you can't just get a divorce well, as easily. That's the point. That's right. the point is that no, you're trapped. now you're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because back in the day, that was the thing. It's like, okay, yes, uh, you didn't live together. You you got married and then you joined unions, right? And by that time, you had to work it out. Because yeah. back then, even though the statistics were still the same, the data wasn't as readily available, which meant that everybody in their mind thought, Divorce really isn't an option. It's just not. Yeah. I've already made this commitment and I have to stick through it. Again, a few things aside, you know, deal breakers aside, abuse and, you know, infidelity, whatever, but the extreme. Right. But you can't, you couldn't just, you know, divorce him because you didn't like that, you know, he took mean dumps in, <laughs> in the bathroom. But it also depends too on like... Although I think that is a divorceable offense. <laughs> Like if you've been dating, like I've known people in the past that got engaged after like 10 years of dating, what, for whatever the reason, they just, you know, were happy with the way they were yeah. and then they get married, you know, or get engaged after 10 years. I can see in that scenario of them not moving in together before marriage, because if you've been with someone for 10 years, I'm not saying you'll know everything, but yeah. you've probably seen a lot of things. That's a whole decade, right? Yeah. So it's probably like, yeah, we've never really lived together, but I know this person and I know he's dirty and I know he's all these things right, that you right. already know might be a little bit easier moving in. It might be, it might be, but it, that that's the whole thing. And I guess once you, I guess once you get to marriage, you would think that there's no more levels. <laughs> 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 but I kind of feel like there's some unspoken levels. Mm. If you get past that, now you're married. Okay. It's like, that's not the end all. That's just the beginning. Are you talking about kids or something different? I'm talking about the relationship. Okay. It's, it's a, it's a whole nother ballpark now, right? So now you're married. Now you, again, you can't leave. You made this commitment. Now you have to make it work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things are going to go into play there, right? Because it's like, okay, when I was living together or whatever, maybe, or, you know, even before then, I used to have a life. I used to go play poker with the boys, go play tennis, you know, with these friends. I had to pick up a basketball game every night. Maybe you can't do that anymore mm. because now you're married and your wife wants to go to the pumpkin patch or she wants to do something with a couple friend or whatever. So things are going to change for you too, believe it or not. Yeah. You would think like, oh, it's nothing. It's just a piece of paper, but it's it's a lot more than that. Right. And so... Marriage, even after all of that, still continues. You still have to, because now, and it's different. And you know, you know, we've talked about this and other ones, but now you have to almost keep them content as well, because 
People get unhappy in relationships. You relationship. should continue to court your spouse. You should. You should. But that's what I'm saying. It's just the beginning mm. because now that's just, this is the only person you're going to date, right? And you should go out on dates. But it's also now you know what we know that people will sometimes feel lonely in a relationship, feel unfulfilled for one reason or the other. Maybe they look back on their life. Maybe the career didn't go the same way. Maybe they didn't marry who they thought they were going to marry. Whatever the case. Maybe they wanted to do other things, but let's say they wanted to be um, a journalist and travel to foreign countries. Well, you can't do that because you've got a husband now. Right. So you can't just get up and leave whenever you want to, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a bunch of stuff that, that goes on. So you have to make them content to a certain degree or try to be content together, I suppose. It's weird. It continues to evolve even after that. It never stops. Like the so you relationship. consider that a level? I do. Okay. I do because now you've known me, mm-hmm. but now I want to discover new parts of me and I hope you can come along, if you will. I gotcha. And it used to not be, when the people used to suppress those sorts of things, both men and women. Mm. They did it for the family and they, you know, like they just got along with one another. Or they just stayed together. But But nowadays it feels like everybody's looking for a certain amount of fulfillment and the... And they want it not always necessarily within the relationship. It's like something more mm. outside of that. Yeah. And I don't know whatever brings people fulfillment. Because let's just say in that scenario that we played out, children were involved and grandchildren and stuff like that. And then they end up leaving eventually where they have their own lives. And now you're by yourself with them again. And so when you are when you have children, it changes the dynamics in the marriage because there's other people that you have to be around or whatever. Right. So a lot, of, a lot of things change and you evolve. Right. Quite a bit. You grow quite a bit. The the expectation, or at least the hope anyways, is that you grow together and you're able to do that. But there are instances where you grow apart and and your hobbies or your interests and everything don't align and you can't find that happy medium. And that's when, you know, it can be that they become... It could bring them together, mind yeah. you, but they could also become just roommates. It's such a weird thing when you think about the opposites attract thing. So like in that scenario, let's say that you, the kids are out of the house, you're much older now, right? Mm-hmm. How do you continue to be, I'm not saying you, you're going to be unhappy. I'm just saying like all those things that you have in common with your spouse, you can go back to enjoying those. But if it's opposites attract, meaning that you guys don't have anything in common, but each other, how does that You know what I'm saying? I think what eventually happens, at least what I've seen with older couples, is that depending on how how old they are together, they do bond together a lot more. And I think it's out of the fact that they both realize it's really not feasible for either one of us to go. If you're (laughs) sixty-five, yeah, if you're like sixty-five and seventy, and again, certain things aside. If he's abusive verbally or whatever and he's just throwing stuff and he's just a mean old whatever or she is, mind you, that happens too. And you're just unhappy. It's not that you want to look for anybody else, but it's just like it can't be with this person, right? But if it's just like if that is not a thing, you tend to bond together. Yeah. Because it's like... Decent household is... Yeah, because you're like, we're in this together. Yeah. We're not going to go anywhere. And I've known you for so many years and I appreciate you. We have so much history... And a lot of the stuff that's said in the past, arguments and all that stuff, it goes away. Yeah. It, you don't even think about it anymore. It's so secondary. And sometimes even infidelities for that matter. Let's say it happened when they were in their 20s. They they overcame that and they had a beautiful marriage all the way up until they were 60. And even if you bring it up, it's like, yeah, you know, they had an affair. Could be like, yeah, I knew about it. We got over it. It was in the past. They, you know, she showed a lot of contrition and like, we're good now. Yeah. That's, you know, like it's not a thing. Yes, it was hurtful at the time, but I can focus on that one brief moment in time of our relationship. But we had so many good years yeah. aside from that. So like that over overcomes all of the the small little negative here and there. And so that happens too. But again, it's still a level in my, in my experience. <laughs> so I think that's where the unique part of relationships, uh, romantic relationships, is there are levels. I mean, you do that with friendships, but it's different because, again, you're running parallel lives and whatever their interests are, there are, unless they're going down a dark path, like they're getting into drugs and stuff like that or whatever, that's different. But hopefully what I will say is that both in a marriage and even friendships, you tend to help each other out. 
I know whenever I look at my buddies and stuff and I see that them, they've been going to the gym, working out, it inspires me. It's like, all right, that means I need to get out there. But if I saw them, if every time we got together, we're just chugging beers and we're all having beer bellies, we're all just going to get fat, <laughs> fat and, and just unhealthy altogether, right? Whereas sometimes they, you know, like you see them, it's like, oh man, he's looking good. Like maybe I should go in there. Like I can do it too. And I think that has a lot to do with it. I think your partner's the same way. If if you're constantly negative, if you're upset about maybe your life didn't work out the way it did and you're resentful and still in that relationship, it's just going to become more and more toxic after time. And they're just like, I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. So, but hopefully that doesn't happen. So but anyways, that's how we know whether we go to the next level. <laughs> so what's the last level? You both die? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And that's, that's if you are fortunate enough to die together because a lot of times. Like in the notebook, they're in each other's arms. Yeah, they? man. Because I mean, I don't want to leave off on a morbid thought, but let's say you have been together with somebody for 60 or 70 years and then they pass away and then you live an extra 10 years without them. Mm. That's going to be tough. Because the one person, the one and only person that knows you more than anybody else is that person. Probably a lot of TV watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. And obviously your kids, I'm not saying that they don't love you, but they might have their own lives or whatever. They and, moved away. Well, the thing about getting old, that's the only thing that sucks about getting old is that you start to lose more and more people. You just do. I mean, you'll gain grandkids and stuff like that, but at some point you'll be so far removed, they can't relate to you anymore. Yeah. I mean, there's too much of an age difference, right? Now, I'm not saying that you can't connect yeah. with your grandkids, but obviously, it's you different. know, yeah, it's, it's much different. And so, especially if you have a small family, you start to become very, very lonely really, really fast. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, don't get me wrong, it's not completely bleak. I don't want to leave off on that note <laughs> because there are, you know, like groups and stuff and, you know, there, there's like different organizations where older people yeah. meet and do stuff and like you can start up a community. They have like places all over where, you know, they congregate together and they hang out and stuff. So it's yeah. not all bad. But yeah. But anyways, yeah, the last level is death. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to die after she dies because she'll feel a certain kind of way about it. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, it's a good conversation. So, yeah. All right. So until next time. Yes. All right. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.